Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. Now, one of the great things about working at a place like the Urban Institute is I'm surrounded by people who are not only trying to improve the world around us through their research and through their data analysis, but I'm also surrounded by people who are exploring new tools, new techniques, and new data visualization methods. And so today, to help us understand what a dot density map is and how to create it, I invited my Urban Institute colleague, Aaron Williams, to help us. Now, I learned basically everything I know in R from Aaron. So if you ever need a good teacher, he's the guy to go to. So Aaron's going to help us understand what a dot density map is and even an example from the Urban Institute that really exemplifies, I think, uh, how these can be valuable and how these can be useful. So Aaron, off to you. Hi, my name is Aaron Williams, and I'm a data scientist in the Income and Benefits Policy Center at the Urban Institute. Today, I'm going to share dot density maps. A dot density map is a visualization that represents data as projected points on a map. This requires both a latitude and a longitude to be associated with each point. And that latitude and longitude can come from the original data, or it can be randomly sampled from small polygons, such as census tracts or city blocks. Sometimes base maps are included with dot density maps, such that you have a layer of points on top of a base map that could be the outlines of all 50 states or the outlines of all the wards in Washington, DC. There are a few things to consider when making a dot density map. The first, and this is a consideration when making any type of spatial data visualization, is you need to ask yourself, are the data spatial data? Is there a story, a spatial story to be told with this data? Many times people will create maps, dot density maps, that simply reflect the underlying population of a given area. For example, showing all 50 states and there's a high concentration of people in the Northeast and on the West Coast and not many in the middle. That's not a particularly interesting spatial story to tell. So just ensure before making a map that you have a spatial story. A second consideration is overplotting. Overplotting is when glyphs or points from some observations cover up and obscure glyphs or points from some other set of observations. And this commonly occurs when the number of observations in your visualization increases. This is very common with large data sets today now that large data sets are, are very in vogue. A third consideration is computation. So in a program like R, most data visualizations will re uh, render almost immediately. But because we're dealing with spatial data, which has polygons that have lots of vertices and also our points, it can take several minutes for a dot density map of the entire US to render. Now I'm going to share one dot density map that I like. So one dot density map that I like is the Urban Institute's an interactive view of the housing boom and bust. This data visualization is a dot density map that contains the 48 states and the continental United States. The data come from the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act and contain race and ethnicity information for every single mortgage in the United States from 2001 to 2019. Here, one point it represents about 10 mortgages, just for clarity. Now, importantly, there is definitely a spatial story to be told with this data because of residential segregation. For example, if we zoom in on Atlanta, we see that on the south side of Atlanta, many mortgages are held by people who identify as black, whereas on the north side of Atlanta, many people who hold mortgages identify as white. Now the points here aren't necessarily transparent, but as I mentioned earlier, one dot equals about 10 mortgages. This is to avoid that overclotting issue that I mentioned earlier. Finally, the creation of this map actually took a long time and a lot of computational power, but it has since been rendered in a web browser so that it's quick to explore both spatially across the United States and also across time, going all the way back to 2001 and coming all the way up to last year. 
Thank you so much. I hope you found this useful and I hope you get an opportunity to make a dot density map in the near future. Aaron, thanks a lot for that great summary of what a dot density map is and that great example from the Urban Institute. I hope you, the listener and the reader, will be able to use a dot density map in your own work. There's lots of great tutorials out there at the Urban Institute GitHub page and lots of other R tutorials out there that you can use to create your own dot density map. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. I will see you then.